So when you hear the phrase artificial intelligence, what, what is the first thing you think of? Let me know down below in the comments. Five, four, three, two. Did you guess yet? Well, I'm here to tell you today that those things aren't necessarily artificial intelligence. Hey, what's up, it's Meezy, and today I'm gonna be telling you exactly what artificial intelligence is and what it's not. And so, Typically, when you hear the word artificial intelligence, it's really just a market employee. There's a lot of stuff working behind it and it's not always exactly what you think it is. It's not this smart supercomputer that can just do anything. So before we talk about exactly what artificial intelligence is, I wanna give you a little backstory, a little history on artificial intelligence. So the concept of artificial intelligence has been around for quite some time. You can trace it all the way back to ancient Greece. Aristotle was one of the first people to ask, can a machine think? Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's not a brand new concept. We move forward a little bit um, to the time of Alan Turing. And if you don't know who that is, definitely look him up. Some people like to call him the father of computer science. Um, but he did some very wild and groundbreaking things, one of them being creating the Turing test. The Turing test basically says if you cannot decipher between some text that is generated by a computer and a text that is generated by a human, then the computer that generated that text that you could not uh, decipher was generated by a human or not passes the Turing test. Okay, so basically, if you look at a sentence and you can't tell if the computer wrote it or not, then that computer passes the Turing test because they behave and act like a human. Um, and some people have beef with this test, definitely it takes some time to look it up. I might talk about all the drama in another video. Um, but a lot of people don't really agree with that idea of artificial intelligence. Um, so we have what we call um, human-based intelligence, which is what the Turing test follows, right? We fooled you into thinking that a human wrote this, so that's artificial intelligence. But then there's also um, ideal rational intelligence, which has some of the concepts of human-based intelligence, right? Like it can learn, it knows things, it can, you know, regurgitate information, but it uh, does not behave the way that a human does, right? It, it leaves out the pieces of decision-making and thoughts and that kind of stuff that we as humans just literally cannot separate. Like we can't separate our emotions from our decisions no matter how much uh, men will try to tell you that we can. <laughs> um, and so that, that was like Alan Turing's mark on artificial intelligence. So if you fast forward a little bit into 1956, the first ever artificial intelligence conference was held. Now at the time it was not called that because the term didn't exist, but at this conference they did coin the term artificial intelligence. Um, and they also presented one of the first like artificial intelligence programs. It was a logic program. Um, that story's not that interesting, but I mean, look it up. And if you look up the history of artificial intelligence or click any of the links that I'm gonna leave for you in the description if you wanna read more, you will see uh, some information about the first artificial intelligence conference. Um, and just a quick fun fact, everybody did not like the name artificial intelligence. And as we get into this video, you'll probably understand why, uh, but the name did stick, it was catchy, and we are still here today talking about artificial intelligence. Okay, so now that you have the history and you have a context, let's move into uh, what falls under AI. And so um, a lot of people like to think that artificial intelligence is just like, you know, one huge bubble and everything is artificial intelligence, but that's really not the case. And even everything that's marketed to you as artificial intelligence is not necessarily artificial intelligence. So you have this great big bubble, or I think of it as an umbrella that is labeled as artificial intelligence, right? Under that umbrella, inside that bubble is machine learning, okay? Machine learning, the easiest way that I can explain it to you is when you teach a computer to 
look at a picture of a horse and tell you that it's a horse. And you just keep fine tuning in, you feed it a lot of information at the beginning, you test it out, and you know, you might show it a picture of a very large uh, zebra and it'll say, yep, that's a horse. And you'll say, no, that's a zebra. It's not a horse, it's not a horse. And so you'll keep training it, giving it more pictures of horses so it'll learn what a horse is. And then you start testing it more and more and throwing it random pictures until it gets to the point where it can confidently tell you that that is a horse or that is not a horse. That is one, that is called a classification problem. Um, and that's the, the, the gist of machine learning, right? You teach a machine what something is or what it's looking for, and then it can give you that information that you are looking for and decipher, you know, if that was what you were looking for. That is the basis of machine learning. Inside the machine learning bubble, uh, we then have deep learning, which is just, in a word, um, hardcore machine learning. It, I'm not gonna attempt to explain that to you, okay? I'm still getting a grip on it, but just know that it takes a lot more power. It has a lot more neurons being connected there. And so um, you can sometimes get better results if you use deep learning, but it's just another subset of machine learning. And so right outside of that bubble, you have data science. And uh, data science is just the ability to, you know, gather a lot of data, analyze it, clean it, make sure it works for building those machine learning models. So you need data science in order to do machine learning very well. So they, they kind of work together hand in hand. And so all three of those things, machine learning, deep learning, and um, data science, fall under the umbrella of artificial intelligence. But just because something is machine learning, deep learning, or data science does not automatically mean that it's artificial intelligence, all right? So remember that. All right, so let's get into this last part of the video. Finally, what is artificial intelligence? Well, there is not really one umbrella artificial intelligence. We, we basically have three different types that we like to talk about. So we have artificial narrow intelligence, which is sometimes called weak AI. And that is what we typically are referring to these days when we talk about artificial intelligence. It's your self-driving cars, it's your G homes, it's your uh, Amazon assistants, your iPhone assistants, those kinds of things, virtual assistants, all that kind of stuff. Um, and those are narrow intelligence because they have one task that they can perform and that's it. They would not be able to handle a curveball. If you went to a Tesla car and asked it to teach you how to swim, it wouldn't be able to do that. It, can, it only knows how to drive a car. Um, and so anything that only has one task that it can perform is classified as artificial narrow intelligence. Then we can move in artifi into artificial general intelligence. Now artificial general intelligence, it, it can learn some things. It can handle some of those curveballs. It's going to behave like a human. It's gonna be that human based artificial intelligence type of deal. Okay, and so then we're gonna move into artificial super intelligence. And artificial super intelligence and artificial general intelligence really work together. Um, and this super intelligence is when you get to a level above a human. Oh, I only have two minutes left on the SD card, hold on. So lastly, artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence work together. Artificial super intelligence is at a level higher than what a human can comprehend. It is going to be some artificial intelligence, a computer that can think beyond what we can, that can put things together that the human brain literally is not capable of. And so this mix of artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence just simply does not exist in the world, but an example of this kind of technology would be Friday or Jarvis from Iron Man. Um, or, you know, the robots in iRobot or any robot takeover movie. They have the level of intelligence to be able to think for themselves, learn new things for themselves, and put them together in ways that we ourselves cannot do and probably, I won't say won't ever be able to do, but definitely not in my lifetime. Um, and so if you've ever like been seen, seen a video of a really, really cool robot um, that can like move really well and mimic a human's um, actions like Sophia the robot or any of that kind of thing, 
they're never smart enough to actually like think no matter how much how well they communicate um they always miss the mark at some point and so you don't have to worry about a robot invasion anytime soon but um you know maybe one day we'll get there but as of today we don't have the technology to make a robot think that well and honestly even the artificial narrow intelligence doesn't work very well right now so we have a lot of improvements to make so there you go that is what artificial intelligence is. I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, in my next two videos, I'll be explaining data science, machine learning, telling you how you can learn, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you are subscribed. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.